Okay, chapter three, rational functions. Rational functions are just fraction functions. So we have here one over x, which is just a reciprocal of a linear function. So a linear function is something with just an x, y equals x, or y equals mx plus b. When we flip that upside down, it's going to have a 1 on the top, and then your x or your mx plus b is going to be on the bottom. So that's what they mean by a reciprocal. We already know what this looks like. I mean, we've seen it before in grade 11. It should look something like this. And when we start to analyze it a little bit further, like your domain and range, your asymptotes, and something new like your end behaviors, you can then really get a, a good picture of what your graph looks like. So that's what's really neat about this unit. You actually do all of this math and you finally see it come to fruition by like putting it all together and drawing this really neat graph. This guy right here, you know that your domain is any real numbers, but your domain can't be zero because we have this vertical asymptote in the way. Then your height can be any real numbers, but your height can never be zero because this horizontal asymptote is in the way. That means that you have these restrictions on your domain and your range. Then we just listed our x and y um, equations that represent your vertical and your horizontal asymptotes. Be very careful, the x equals to zero do not write and does not equal to zero, like don't put a cross through here, that's not a vertical asymptote. So when you write x equals to zero, this represents a line, and that line is this vertical line that is our vertical asymptote. I'm going to talk about that more in a little bit. Now this last part reads as, as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches zero. So what does that mean? As x approaches positive infinity, your graph is going to go down and down and down, closer and closer to a y value of zero. Just like as x approaches negative infinity, y is going to approach zero. So as x approaches negative and more negative numbers, your graph is going to go up, up, up towards zero, but never touches. Okay, so that's just something new. And like I said, let's start putting all this stuff together and drawing like a really neat graph. In grade 11, you only dealt with numbers up here. You never dealt with x's. So in grade 12, we're going to start putting polynomials up here. I mean, you did have polynomials at the bottom, so something like this. But now we're going to see polynomials at the top as well. Now, this bottom part in grade 11, we talked about it never being able to equal to 0, because a denominator with a 0 on the bottom is undefined. So what makes this undefined? Well, when x is equal to the opposite of this number, divided by this number, 5 over 3, negative, then that means that you're going to get a 0 at the bottom as your denominator. Therefore, we write it as a restriction, and when it's written as a restriction, it has to have the does not equal to sign. Let me get out my pen for a second. If you want to write it as a vertical asymptote, we always look down here and we say, well, x is equal to negative 5 over 3. This is the equation of a straight line, a straight up and down line, and that's going to be our vertical asymptote. So notice I don't cross the equal sign. That means that you have a restriction. Okay, so this guy right here is just another example. This one, you'd have to factor the bottom, something like this, and it's a difference of squares, so you have x and x, and one's a negative 3, and one's a positive 3. This is going to give you two different restrictions, like this, Okay, which gives rise to two different vertical asymptotes, one at positive 3, opposite, right, opposite of this guy, and then x equals negative 3, which is this guy. Okay, so this graph, if I decide to graph it, would have two vertical asymptotes. Just to reiterate everything, we're going to look at the really easy ones first with just a number on the top. In maybe the next couple videos, we'll start to add polynomials on the top, but let's, let's keep it simple for now. Okay, the restrictions, like we said, cannot make this equal to zero, so it's the opposite of the C, divided by the K, and we put a dash through the equal sign. But if you want the actual line that represents a vertical asymptote, you don't put that strike through. Now your Horizontal asymptotes are a little bit more tricky. You're actually going to need to know about the end behaviors to figure this out. So horizontal asymptotes work like this. 
we wanted to know what happens to the graph when x approaches negative infinity and when it approaches positive infinity. So what's happening to your graph? Okay, remember that we write it like this. And I'm just going to show you one more time. To know what's happening horizontally, we're going to just take a look at your graph when it approaches positive infinity and negative infinity. So that's going to narrow um, the gap and kind of figure out where our horizontal asymptote is. Okay, so we're going to do one example. You know what, I'm going to put all the other examples which are more difficult into a separate video. I, you know what, in grade 12, these lessons get kind of long, so I'm, I'm trying to keep them under 10 minutes, but it, it's impossible really. Every single slide is so important. So what I'm going to do is I'll just put the more complicated um, examples in a separate video, and they're really important as well. So you can check it out a little bit later, um, but this example, let's, let's do one in this video. So we have this equation right here. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to graph it. So we have, first of all, our vertical asymptote, which is down at the bottom. We can't have this equal to 0. So we're going to go x equals to negative 7. Because negative 7, if that was in our x value, we're going to get a 0 at the bottom. So this is basically our restriction, but we don't put that cross through. If I start to show you the graph now, I didn't know what the graph looked like, but I'm thinking there should be a vertical line right here at negative 7, so I've indicated that in red. I do want to know how the graph behaves around that line, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make almost like a chart. Okay, so the chart goes, let's take that negative 7 and analyze what's happening from the right and from the left. Okay, so I might choose numbers like, okay, from the right-hand side of negative 7, very close, maybe negative 6.9. Okay, so negative 6.9, I'm going to put into the x, and I'm going to figure out what this answer is. Now, I'm getting like this huge positive number, and that means I'm going towards infinity. So that means when you have like negative 6.9, your y value is huge, positive infinity. That means your graph is going upwards here. Now if I choose a number that's really close to negative 7 from the left hand side, maybe negative 7.1. Okay, so I want to know what's happening to the graph at this x value. You take that and you put it into the x and you figure out what your y equals to. So again, I'm getting a super negative number and that means it's really close to negative infinity. Which means that my graph is going to be really, really, really far down. That means the graph should be approaching like this. Okay, so that's basically it for the vertical asymptotes. Now what about the horizontal? The horizontal we actually figure out like this. Take an extremely positive number, so we always put positive infinity and negative infinity into the table like this. Take a very positive number like let's say 100 or 1000, just something really big. Okay, and take that number, place it into your x, so I want to know at x equals 1000, what is my y value? and I get something very close to zero. It should be like 0, 0.000 and then onwards, but it's a positive zero. So that's why I wrote above. It's actually slightly above zero, and that's why the line is up here. Now if I take a really negative number, so negative 1000, and then I sub that into my x, and I figure out my y value, I get negative 0.0000 which means it's really close to zero, but from below. Okay, so that means that it's approaching zero, but from below the x-axis, because it was a negative zero. Okay, so that tells me right now that these two numbers right here are similar. That's gonna be our horizontal asymptote. So remember to always put your x and your y's in front of your numbers that you find as your vertical and horizontal asymptotes. From that information, I mean, you already know what your green and red red and green end behaviors are, you may as well just link them in the middle, and that's basically your graph. So this is your graph for y equals f at x, which is 1 over x plus 7. Okay, so that together is all the information that you need in order to create a somewhat accurate graph. In the next video, I'm going to show you a couple other things that you need in order to draw a really good picture.